Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for History with a Twist. Each episode, we'll explore new topics as a mashup of historical chronicles and recipe roundups. We hope to inspire you by sharing a collection of history highlights unique to Greater Jacksonville. You can also experiment with our featured cocktail recipes to get a taste of history for yourself. Get ready to dive into a virtual happy hour with Mosh! Hi there, I'm Elizabeth. Hey, I'm Caroline. Thank you so much for joining us for our first episode. We're so excited to share a little history of the Tamuguans and local food history with you. And of course, a fresh cocktail recipe. Yes, of course, the cocktail recipe too. Can't forget that. Let's first delve into our local Native American history by discussing the Tamuguans and the legend of the Three Sisters. Later, we'll share with you our recipe roundup of the week. So, where do we start? Well, the early Native Americans in Northeast Florida were called the Tamuquins. Did they really call themselves Tamuquins? We're not really sure. Actually, why don't I let anthropology professor Dr. Keith Ashley explain this to us better. Today, we refer to the native peoples of northern peninsular Florida and southeastern Georgia as the Tamukwa, but in reality, we don't know what they called themselves. The term Tamukwa does not represent a single unified tribe as much as it does a language with a variety of dialects. The dialect of Tamukwa spoken in the Jacksonville area was Mokama, an indigenous word meaning ocean or the sea. The Tamukwa living in villages along the lower St. John's River and as far north as southeastern Georgia spoke the Mokama or maritime dialect of Tamukwa. For simplicity, we will be referring to them all as Tamukwins. The Tamukwa culture was established 200 years before Europeans started messing things up. When the first Europeans arrived, they recorded interactions and observations of the natives. Granted, these accounts are super biased. <laughs> but they are an important source of information about the natives' way of life. The Tamukwa people never had a written language and only passed things down through stories. The first record of the Tamukwa was collected by the French Huguenots in 1562 and then the Spanish a few years later. Now a Spanish priest named Father Francisco Perea provided insight into the healthcare, agricultural practices, and more from a written language he crafted for the Tamukwa people. It's not like they were asking for a better way to communicate, but Europeans during this time were pretty pushy. Many of his fellow priests did not speak Tamukwa, and this made it impossible to hear confessions from the converted Tamukwa Catholics. Father Pareja created a list of questions for the priest to ask during confessions, written in both Spanish and Tamukwa, known as the Confessionario. Historians are able to use this document to piece together a Tamukwa written language and therefore have a better understanding of the Tamukwa lifestyle, including their agricultural practices. Dr. Ashley helps explain their dietary habits a little more. The Mokama relied on nearby rivers, tidal creeks, and salt marshes for much of their food. Using traps, nets, and weirs, they caught many of the same fish that people catch today. Farming was a late addition to their diet, not occurring in our area until around AD 1450, which is only about a hundred years prior to Jean Ribot stepping foot on Fort George Island in 1562. In their gardens, the Mokama planted corn, beans, squash, and pumpkin. The corn, beans, and squash were all grown together in a field and called the Three Sisters. These three crops supported each other, like... You get what we mean. The corn provides tall stalks for the beans to climb. The beans help provide nitrogen for the corn and squash, and the squash grows across the ground, protecting the moist soil with its large leaves. Together, these crops provide a well-balanced diet, complete with healthy vitamins and minerals. So why is this crop trinity even called the Three Sisters? Well, there are many legends surrounding these crops in Native American cultures. The central theme of these legends is always strength in diversity. All stories follow three different sisters who learn to connect and love each other, making them stronger together. 
While we may never know the Timucuan's legend behind the three sisters, we know that this was an important method of food production for the native peoples who called the first coast home hundreds of years ago. I don't know about you, but all this history is making me thirsty. For those of us calling this region home today, we may not think of corn as a main ingredient for a cocktail, but really, it's a common grain source for distilled spirits in the U.S. This week's recipe roundup, the sweet corn cocktail, boldly features a staple of the Americas by using sweet corn to make a flavored simple syrup and corn milk beverage. I know this may sound unconventional, but this quarantine-friendly cocktail... Quarantine friendly? Well, yes. Any cocktail is quarantine friendly if you drink it at home. This one combines two ounces of vodka, an ounce of corn milk, some simple syrup, salt and pepper, and it's topped with a little ginger beer and cayenne pepper to create a truly delicious happy hour treat. To add a Floridian taste, we recommend Manifest Florida Citrus Vodka to do the trick. Don't worry if you don't have all these ingredients available. Think of it as a challenge and change it up to suit yourself. Post your version and tag us with at Moss Jacks. Before we go, we'd like to give a shout out to those who made this episode possible. Dr. Keith Ashley, our collections manager and registrar, Lena Hernandez, and the rest of the Mosh crew. Thanks for tuning in to History with a Twist. Keep a lookout for future episodes and tasty cocktail recipes brought to you by Mosh Connect. If there's any local history you'd like to learn more about, send us a message at info at themosh.org. All of our content is available for free at themosh.org slash educate slash connect. If you enjoyed this show, show your support and make a donation so we can continue to create programs like this. And if you haven't already, Follow us on social media at Mosh Jacks to stay connected. Until next time. <laughs>